Welcome to the Healthy, Wealthy, and Smart Podcast. Each week, we interview the best and brightest in physical therapy, wellness, and entrepreneurship. We give you cutting-edge information you need to live your best life, healthy, wealthy, and smart. The information in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and should not be used as personalized medical advice. And now, here's your host, Dr. Karen Litzy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, Karen Litzy, and today's episode is brought to you by NetHealth. NetHealth wants to ensure that you maintain strong relationships with your patients. They've created the Redoc Patient Portal, which provides a secure line of communication between you and your patients. You can conduct video conferencing for telehealth, You have secure messaging, you can share documents and photos, and your patients can view their health information and appointments 24-7 secure on-demand access to their therapy health information without phone calls and voice messages. If you want to learn more about the Redoc Patient Portal by NetHealth, contact them at redoc at nethealth.com. All right, Uh, uh, before we get to today's episode, I just have one other quick announcement, and that is uh, I am getting ready to launch my flagship course called the Strictly Business Private Practice Mastermind. Uh, If you want to get on the wait list, because it will be limited this first time around, uh, then go to karenlitzy.com slash waitlist, and make sure you get on the wait list. The course is going to be six modules By the end of three months, you will have your physical therapy practice up and running. It is for cash-based physical therapists, for concierge physical therapists, and it is really for people who are first-time entrepreneurs and they are tired of working 40-plus hours for someone else and are ready to make the jump to to be an entrepreneur. So again, go to karenlitzy.com slash waitlist. All right, on to today's episode. I'm excited to have another great female entrepreneur and physical therapist on the program, Krista Gurka, and we are going to discuss marketing. And I know in a lot of uh, healthcare, marketing can be a bad word, but Krista really breaks it down to turn that around into a good thing. So a little bit more on Krista. She's an orthopedic physical therapist specializing in Pilates-based fitness, rehabilitation, injury prevention, and weight loss. Krista Gurka's reputation speaks for itself. With two decades of experience training those of all ages and fitness levels, the founder and owner of Miami's Pilates in the Grove, which serves the Coconut Grove and South Miami communities, believes in offering her clients personal attention with expert and well-rounded instruction. And on today's episode, like I said, we're going to be talking about marketing, and we're going to go through some ideal steps when it comes to marketing. Why you should design an ideal client avatar, how a small marketing budget can make a big impact, crafting the perfect message to attract your ideal client, and the importance of continual trial and error of your message. So a huge thank you to Krista for coming onto the podcast and sharing this. And we also talk about how to uh, tailor your messaging, especially in these times Uh, So thank you, Krista, for coming on and sharing so much uh, information. And make sure you listen to the end because she's got a special free resource for all of our listeners. Hi, Krista. Welcome to the podcast. I'm happy to have you on. Thanks so much for having me, Karen. I look forward to chatting with you today. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about uh, three strategies for marketing for cash-based practices and the good thing about all of these strategies is they don't cost a lot of money, right? Exactly. And that's important when you're starting a business. You know, we don't want to have to take out a bunch of loans. We don't want to have to spend a lot of our own money. We want to try and start up as lean as we can. And so I am going to throw it over to you to kick it off with what is your first strategy for marketing for cash-based practices? Perfect. So one of the reasons I just want to start with saying why I I'm a little passionate about this marketing thing is because myself included, when I first started, I really kind of, I felt like I started backwards almost like from the ends. And I think it's really so helpful for people to learn to start kind of from the beginning, right? So my very first strategy that I think is really, really important is to have a good idea of who your ideal customer is. 
okay, well, who your target audience is. And I get often some pushback from people saying, well, everybody can use my services. Of course, everyone can use physical therapy. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean you have to single anybody out. But, um, you know, I think Marie Forleo said it, or maybe somebody said it to her, but when you speak to everyone, you really, you speak to no one. And so sleuthing your, who your ideal customer is, how they feel, how they think, um, is very, very beneficial. So if you want, I can kind of go through like a few questions that I use to kind of narrow down who that person is. Yeah, let's do Does it. That work for you? Okay. Yeah. So and one of the things to know when we go through our ideal customer, we actually give this person a name, an age, a gender, demographic, married, not married, retired, not retired, education level, median income. And when we do anything in our business now, so we are ideal customer. Her name is Georgia. And so we say, every time we have a meeting, we say, well, what will Georgia think about this? Will Georgia like this or will Georgia not like this? So that's the very first thing. And we refer to that person as their name. And then you want to go through like, what are their biggest fears about whatever problem they're looking to solve? Um, people buy based on emotion. And so getting to the underlying source of that emotion is really, can be very powerful. So what are their fears? Um, what do they value? Right? Because when it comes to money, people paying for this, it's not always a dollar amount, it's more in line with what do they value. And if you can show these clients that, that you sir, offer them a value, the money, the dollar amount kind of becomes obsolete. So things like that, um, what, what could happen? What would be the best case scenario if this problem were solved for them? What would be the worst case scenario if this problem were never solved? So in terms of physical therapy, let's take generalized orthopedics, right? Back pain. 80 million Americans suffer from back pain. Yeah, that's so an easy one to start it's with. It's an easy one to start yeah. with, right? So let's think of, you know, back pain. It's so general, right? But if you can say, what is the worst thing that can happen because of this back pain, right? So maybe the worst thing that could happen is they, this person loses days at work because they have such bad back pain they can't sit at their desk or maybe they have such bad back pain that their performance drops and so because they can't concentrate and so now maybe they lose their job or they get demoted because their back pain so the worst case scenario is maybe they're not they end up losing their job because of back pain so you kind of take it all the way back um, and then if you could speak to them about how would it feel if we were able to give you the opportunity to sit eight hours a desk and not think of your back pain one time. Now, what would that mean to you? So really kind of undercovering a lot, a lot, a lot about um, who your ideal customer is, is my number one strategy. And I also find that it's a great exercise in empathy. So for those that maybe don't have that real innate sense of empathy, it's a way for you to step into their shoes and I always think of it as uh, what, what are their possible catastrophizations? Mm -hmm. So if we put it in the terms that the PT will understand, like when I did this um, a number of years ago, I sort of catastrophized as this person. What would happen if this pain didn't go away. I wouldn't be able to take care of my children. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to go to work. Um, it would affect my marriage. My marriage would break up. I would be a single mom. I would, you know, so you can really project out really, really far and then reel it back in, like you said, and say, well, what would happen if they did work with you? What is the best case scenario on that? So yeah, I just sort of catastrophized out like, super, super far. And it's really helpful because when that person who is your ideal client then comes to you and you're doing their initial evaluation, you can ask them these questions. Yeah. Yeah. It's very powerful. And, and I, I love how you brought in like, you know, empathize with them and, you know, and by the way, a lot of our clients do catastrophize, right. And we have to reel them. Yeah. We have to reel them back in. So um, that was a really, you know, great point. I also think 
it can be sometimes on the flip side where somebody maybe comes in and their goal is very benign. Maybe it's, I really want to be physically fit. I want to look good, right? So you kind of think, well, what's the catastrophe if that doesn't happen? But maybe, maybe they're in a relationship where their partner aesthetics is a big part of that. And maybe they feel insecure and they feel if they don't present well to their partner, their partnership may dissolve, whatever the case may be. So now you're getting to an underlying, it really is more emotional than physical, right? So now you're being able to um, empathize with them in that way and speak to them in those terms, give them positive things that maybe they don't even realize they need. Exactly. And then it, it also seems like once you're in those shoes or walking in their shoes and their footsteps, however you want to put it, that when that person does come to you, you can have a conversation with them that's maybe not so much centered around back pain, mm -hmm. but that's centered around their life. And that's when people make that connection with you, right? So when we're talking to patients who are, who are not sure that they want to start physical therapy, if we kind of get them, they're much more likely to come and see us. So it's not 100%. about the back pain. It's not about the knee pain. It's about how are we going to make a difference in their life? And if we can make that, like you, harking back to what you said earlier, it's an emotional experience. And people tend to buy things based on emotions and their gut feelings mm -hmm. and how they feel. So if we can tap into that in a really authentic way, then talk about a great marketing strategy. Excellent. Exactly. And then, okay, so we've got our, we've got our uh, ideal customer, client, avatar. Mm -hmm. Now what do we do? Great. Now okay. what? <laughs> so you've got your ideal customer, right? And so by the way, people also sometimes think like, well, I don't want to pigeonhole myself into this, right? But by the way, your ideal customer may change. It's okay, first of all, to change. And it you can have mean, more than one. You can have more than one. Certainly, we have more than one in our business. Yeah. And by the way, you may start out thinking you have one ideal customer, but the people that keep coming back may be somebody else. And you're like, oh, obviously, maybe I have to rethink this, right? Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't mean that you can't serve someone else. It just means that when you're thinking about marketing and stuff, you're going to go after. Everything should funnel into one specific thing. So then the next step in the marketing is, okay, so where do these people live? And what I don't mean live like literally what neighborhood do they live in? Where do they live in terms of getting their news information? Where do they live in terms of being on social media? Um, where do they live in terms of, you know, what do they value as far as like personal or professional life? So one thing I, I see is, you know, people, you know, are like, well, I'm gonna put an ad in the newspaper. That's great. But if you live in an area where nobody reads the newspaper, then you're putting your money somewhere that you're not going to be seen. Or maybe the flip side is, well, I'm going to do a lot of stuff on Instagram. Well, if you, your clientele is over 65, studies show that most people over 65 are not on Instagram. That doesn't mean they're, nobody is. It just means, you know, or vice versa. If your client is 25, they're probably not on Facebook anymore. Right. So spend then then again you can be this is why it won't cost you a lot because you can narrow down where you are going to spend your money right also if you're running facebook ads which will then go on instagram um you can narrow down in your audience when you build out your audience to be very 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 specific based on are you a brick and mortar establishment so are you trying to get people to come into your place, right? So you want to say, well, if people are not, if you know that your ideal customer is not, convenience is important and they're not gonna travel more than five miles, you shouldn't market to people that live or work outside of a five mile radius from your studio, right? So um, that's important to know as well as also maybe your customer gets their information from friends or relatives. You know, or like someone said, you know, you need to go see Karen. She's been really great for me. And that's how they get to you. So how can you then get in front of your client's friends, right? Maybe you could do an open house 
invite a friend, bring them in. Let's do a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just kind of like a, a talk, right? Maybe you could bring them in if say your ideal customer, let's say your ideal customer is in their 60s. What are some things that people in that age group are going through? Maybe you can have a talk about that specific thing, not necessarily therapy, but now you get everyone to kind of come to you. It's not even about what you actually do because you can meet them based on where they are. And most people, by the way, they say there's, um, the numbers range, but usually they have to see you about seven times or have seven points of contact with you before they're comfortable buying from you. So these are just way to get people to know, like, and trust you, and then they'll buy from you. So that's strategy number two. Once you know really who your customer is, and it could take a couple years to really start to peel back all the onion of that, then the next thing is be where they are. Be in front of where they are. Yes, absolutely. And, and I love that you mentioned the different types of social media and who's on where, because like you said, this is something that isn't going to break the bank because you have narrowed down exactly where you want to spend your money, right? Exactly. So we're taking who that ideal person is, we're finding out where they like to hang out, what they read, who they're with, all that kind of stuff. So that when you build out a marketing campaign for your business, you kind of know who and where to target, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Yes. And even, so even with Facebook, um, when you build out your audience, right? So you can have a variety of audiences. You can create lookalike audience, which I'm sure is like a whole podcast onto itself, but you can, um, you can also target people that like certain brands. So when I do my ideal customer, I'm like, well, what brand do they resonate with? In other words, so I would say that our brand is a little more towards Athleta versus like Lululemon. And that's not to say one is better than the other. It just means that's who my generally customer is and why, what do they value? They value that customer service you get it you know, Athleta has like a, you can take anything back all the time, right? So when you build out a Facebook ad, you can also target that they've bought from Athleta online, right? So now you're reaching people. So you kind of, you keep just, you just keep narrowing it, narrowing it, mm -hmm. narrowing it down, which can be, you know, other interests. Is your, is your client, um, do you do pelvic health? So obviously women, although men do it, right? If moms, can you target people that like mom influencers on Facebook or on the internet? So these are all just ways that the more you know about them, then you can use that in your marketing strategies afterwards. Absolutely. Fabulous. Okay. So know, uh, know who the person is, know where they're hanging out. What's number three? Okay. So number three to me is the most important. Okay. The most, most important, and that really is messaging. So when you're working with your ideal, when you're working through that ideal customer, um, you know, workbook, um, getting to them to you for them to use their own language for you. So I see this very, very commonly, and I'm sure you can attest to it too. Um, when physical therapists, we love what we do. We are passionate about movement and anatomy and biomechanics and biotensegrity. But you know what? The general population has no idea what we're talking about. None. Zero. Yeah. And so oftentimes I feel like, and by the way, I'm not saying I did this for a long time too. I think that we're trying sometimes to get other practitioners to say, oh, that's a really good therapist. So we're talking about pain science and biotensegrity and fascial planes and the general population, the end consumer is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So you need to speak to them at their level based on what their problem is. And kind of like how we spoke about before, it's not always the back pain. It's what the back pain is keeping them from doing, right? Um, it's not always, at, let's take pelvic health, for example, right? A lot of pelvic health issues are not necessarily painful. 
Okay, so say you have moms, this is super, super common, stress incontinence. They leak, they, they leak when they jump and they go to CrossFit and they're embarrassed to start with a jump rope because they, it's not, why, why do women go 16 years after childbirth? Because you know what, it's not really painful. Mm -hmm. So they don't consider it a problem. Like physical right. therapy is not going to help me with this. So, but if you say to them, hey, that might be common, but that's not normal. And guess what? There's a solution to that. You know, um, that is something that will resonate them. Do you like things like, do you feel, do you worry when you're out at a restaurant as it gets later and later that the line at the bathroom is going to be too long and you stop drinking because you're afraid to wait in line for the bathroom, right? So some women will be like, oh yeah, I totally do that, right? Mm -hmm. Are you afraid to chaperone your child's field trip because the bus ride is going to be three hours and you don't think you can hold it three hours on the bus without a bathroom? That's terrible for a mom. She can't yeah. chaperone her kid's field trip because she's embarrassed that she might have to go to the bathroom. So using their language. So I like to do send out surveys very frequently. Google Doc is super easy, um, Survey Monkey, and ask them things like, what are your fears about whatever it is you're trying to sell, right? Um, what are your fears about exercise? What are your fears about back pain? How does it really make you feel? Okay. Um, what are your, like, maybe even if you could pay, and if money was not an issue and you could pay anything, what would that look like for you? How would that make you feel? And starting to, then you start to use that language. We've all seen marketing campaigns where you're like, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm, totally. That's how you need to get into them. Right. And so maybe, maybe as a physical therapist, it's tough for us because we're like, well, no, their hamstrings are not tight. It's not hamstring tightness. It's neural tension and it's the brain and the nervous system, but they don't, they don't understand. So you got to get them in. They, what they feel is that they have hamstring tightness. Mm -hmm. So you got to tell them that you can fix their hamstring tightness. And then little by little, you explain to them that it's neural tension, right? But if you start off with neural tension, they're going to go somewhere else. And yeah. so I kind of like, I use this example a lot. If you, cause I think we can all relate to this. We're on tech right now, right? Okay. So if you have, I like, I have a Mac, I have an Apple. If I go to the Apple store, cause my computer crashes or my phone won't turn on and I go talk to, what are they? What are their? The genius I, bar. The genius bar. And the guy's like, you know, so what I see here is the motherboard has this money and this software program. You only have so many gigabytes. I'm like, can you fix my computer? Right. That's all I want to know. And if he says yes, I'm like, I don't care how you do it. So whether you use taping or I use myofascial release or somebody uses Pilates or somebody uses craniosacral therapy, it doesn't matter to the, to the end consumer. They just want to know that you can solve their problem. People have problems and they want to know that you have the answer to solve their problem. And that's it. So messaging is really, I think, crucial. It's the crucial point of the puzzle. And now let's let's talk about messaging. Let's dive into this a little bit further. So I think we've all seen different websites of healthcare practitioners, physical therapists, and otherwise that kind of make us go like, oh, oh boy. Because it's a, it, and cringeworthy in that it comes off as a little too salesy, a mm -hmm. little too slick, a little too icky. So how can we compose our messaging to avoid that? Unless that's what our, maybe that's what their ideal mm -hmm. patient wants. I don't know. But how can we craft our messages that are going to hit those pain points, get that emotion going without being like a salesy, weird, gross copy. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Krista's answer. This episode is brought to you by NetHealth, helping you maintain strong relationships with your patients. The Redoc Patient Portal provides a secure line of communication between you and your patients. Conduct virtual visits and have follow-up conversations with your patients via secure messaging when it's convenient for you. Patients have 24-7 secure, on-demand access to their therapy health information without phone calls and voice messages. Video conferencing for telehealth, secure messaging, share documents and photos, and view health information and appointments. 
To learn more, contact them at redoc at nethealth.com. So the other thing I think that's important to understand is people's buying patterns. And when people say no to you, maybe, they're not saying no to you. They're just saying, this is not a value to me at this time. So one of the phrases, one of the things that I've really restructured, because I used to take it very personally if someone would be like, no, I no," And I'd be like, what do you mean? I could totally help you. And now I'm like, you know what? It's basically, I look at it like if I'm at a party and I, or I'm having a dinner party and I serve hors d'oeuvres and I'm like pig in a blanket. And they're like, no, thanks. I'm like, okay, walk away. So I say therapy with Krista. No, thank you. No problem. Let me know if I can help you in the future. Right? So the way that I say it is if you, you just speak honestly to your customer, honestly to your customer, nobody can be you at being you. So be your authentic self, whatever that brand is for you, and whether it's your company or you yourself, and let that come through in your messaging, right? So in other words, like if, if your messaging is also about mindfulness and positivity and looking past the pain and how, what is your relationship with your pain or dysfunction, that should maybe come through in your messaging that you're more holistic, that you're not going to be a um, treat them and street them type thing. But maybe if your messaging is, hey, we're going to treat you and street you and you'll be out of here in 15 minutes, you're going to attract that type of customer. So either one is fine, but I just say really be authentic. And the other thing is I would say send your website. I don't put a lot of huge amount of stock in my website. To be perfectly honest, I do love my website. I'm a very like analytical person. So the colors and where everything sits is important, but I don't think as I'm not a big believer that as much selling goes on on your website as a lot of people may think. I think it's a place where, yes, people are going to Google. Someone gives you a reference at a cocktail party. They're going to Google your website, but they're basically going to look like, does this resonate with me? So what you want to hear is, you know, that tagline at the very beginning, you know, is does that tagline, the first thing that they see, does that resonate with that person? Right? So we use, because we're Pilates and physical therapy, we, well, right now our website's a mess because it's got COVID, we're closed, we're not closed, but um, helping people heal with love, every twist, every turn, and every teaser. Teaser is a Pilates exercise. So we stuck that with love in there because that is part of who we are. We are a community. We care about our clients. So you're not just going to come in here for like two things. We want to help you where you are. So that's, so if someone's like, yeah, if that's cheesy for me, then it's okay. They can go down the street. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and we don't, I used, to, by the way, this has come with like 10 years of testing and you just got to test it. You got to test it and you got to see like, who does it resonate with? Send it to a bunch of people and ask people for their yeah. honest feedback. Give me, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I need to know, like, what do you see when you see this? What, how does it make you feel? So ask people their opinion and not physical therapists. Yes. Yes. And that, you know, I just redid a lot of the messaging on my website and I sent my website from what it was. And I'm in a a group of uh, female entrepreneurs, none of whom are physical therapists. I sent it to them. They gave me some feedback. I changed a little things. I sent it again. They gave more feedback. I changed some more things. And now I feel now they're like, oh, see, this sounds more like you. Mm-hmm. So before what I had on my website is what I thought was me. But then once I really got like had other people take a look at it, they're like, oh, now this sounds more like you. And yeah, I love that tagline on the front. Like the tagline on the top of my website is world-class physical therapy delivered straight to your door. Which is short and concise and what you do. And it's what I do. Very That's easy. Perfect. Yeah. People oftentimes, I see these like, ta- and they're like, you know, they, their elevator pitch. I'm like, what's your elevator pitch? You know, people talk about, oh, it's the elevator pitch. I'm like, if you cannot describe what you do in like two sentences or 10 words or less, how do you think other people are going to, un- if you can't understand it for yourself, how are other people going to understand right, it? Right, right, right. And it, like you said, that takes time though. It does. It does take time. I struggled with this for a while, but 
Me it too. always, yes. I, but I think as physical therapists, one of the reasons we struggle is be, for a number of reasons. One, if we're business owners, we tend to be overachievers, right? We tend to have, we tend, we're bred from a certain mold, right? Um, the other thing I think is physical therapists, we're very analytical. We're very left brained, right? We are, I mean, I think it's what makes me a really great physical therapist. But then the flip side of that is we're perfectionists. Everything has to be analyzed. And so we get so caught up in like the details of analysis. And we went to PT school, so we have to show how smart we are. But being smart also means understanding what your customer is going to understand. And so you kind of have to swivel out of that. So sometimes even in groups when I'm like, when we see people like, hey, what do you guys think of my website? I'm like, don't ask us. We are not your customer. Go ask your customers like what they think of your website. And so when I was in a, in a group, you know, my coach challenged me to narrow things down as well. And, and they used to say things like, if you were running through a desert and you like, and you were selling water, what would your tagline be? Like, what would you, what would your board say? And, you know, people would be like, ice cold, da, 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 da. And he was like, just say water. If someone's <laughs> running through a desert, all they need is water. Right? Water so will suffice. Water will suffice. Clean water. Less is, less is more. <laughs> yeah. Free water even, you know, yeah. less is yeah. more. Yeah. And I remember this is even years ago, I was doing like a one sheet, like a speaker one sheet. This is a little off topic, but talking about how we need to tailor our message to our ideal audience. So I had, you know, Karen, let's see, PT. And I remember the person was like, does that mean like part-time? personal trainer. And I was like, no, physical therapist. Like you need to write that out then because the average person like PT. Okay. Does that mean part-time personal? Like, what does that even mean? So right. it just goes down to, uh, or sorry, goes back to kind of what you said of like, we have to speak the language of the people who we want to come to see us. Right. Yes, and, and exactly. the best way to do that is on our websites is we just have to simplify things and it doesn't mean dumb it down. It doesn't, it just means like simplify. And I'm going to give a, a plug to a book. It's called simple by Alan Siegel. And it's all about how to simplify your language, your graphics and how everything comes together to create a site that people number one are attracted to. And number two, want to hang out at. Right. Exactly. And there's a lot of testing and, and I'm a big thing like testing. It's just testing, testing, testing. Um, we test our sales page. We test um, even now with like some of my, you know, coaching stuff, working with other female business owners, testing, sometimes going in and testing, switching a graphic, have what you have above the fold. So the fold for those of you that don't know is like when you're on a website, it's you don't have to scroll. So everything is above where you have to scroll. Um, a call to action, a CTA right at the top. Um, changing phrases, you know, not using broad language like confidence. Like what does confidence actually mean? But maybe making it um, more specific. Using language so that. That's a really good thing. Helping or like, you know, ridding yourself of back pain so that you can live the life you desire and deserve, right? So changing little, and you can change that, by the way, mid-campaign, mid-launch, daily. You could change that if your Facebook ads are. So one of the things, if, you're, if people are clicking on your ad, but when they're, they're not converting on your sales page, that usually means that Either the messaging in your ad is really off and they're, once they get to your sales page, they're not understood. Like there was a disconnect between what you're offering or your messaging is great, but your sales page sucks mm -hmm. or vice versa. Maybe nobody's clicking on your ad. Then whatever you're trying to sell them there does not resonate with them, right? So there has to be a connection. And usually when people don't buy, there's either a problem with your offer or a problem with your messaging. And when you say that you're testing, can you give, give an example of what that means? So test means put it out there, see what kind of feedback you get. And then it's, think of it as, okay, what we do in therapy, right? So this, what do we do when we get a patient in? We assess, 
we treat and then we reassess, right? So we, what's going on? Let's try a treatment in here. Let's reassess, is it better? If it's not better, what do we do? We go back, assess again, and then do another treatment and then assess, right? Reassess. So in, in marketing, it's the same. So let's say you wanted to do, let's say you're working on like a, a sales page on your website, right? Um, a sales page, I know it sounds salesy, but it's basically your offer, right? If people are getting there, so you see people, you can track, by the way, with Google Analytics, like people coming to your site. If a lot of people are coming to your site, but they're not clicking on the call to action, or they're not following through to checkout, some, there is some disconnect there. So maybe it's the messaging. So then maybe try to change the messaging, tweak the messaging, and then watch the, demo, watch the, um, the uh, outcome again. Maybe people get all the way to the checkout and then abandon cart. Maybe it means that something, they got confused with something at the end. Maybe there's the customer journey wasn't right. They got to the end because they put something in the cart and then maybe your checkout structure is off or something like that. So test it and then just retest until your numbers are like, now we hit it. And by the way, it's taken me, I mean, I'm still testing. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's a constant reinvention. Constant, constant. Because the market keeps changing, especially now, by the way. Mm -hmm. By the way, right now, I don't know when all bets are off. Air. So <laughs> at the time of this recording, we are all We're in, in the, the middle of COVID. Yes. Yeah. So when people come back, your messaging is going to have to change. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. we need to be aware of that. Absolutely. All right. So as we start to wrap things up here, let's just review those three strategies again. So who is your target market is number one. Mm -hmm. Where, you're, where are they hanging out? Where are they living? Not physically their address, but you know, where, what are they reading? Where are they hanging out? What are they doing online? What are they doing offline? And then lastly is making sure that your messaging clearly conveys part one and part two. Correct. Right. All right. And how you can solve their problem. And how you can solve their problem. Awesome. So now if you were to leave the audience with... Um, you know, a quick pearl of wisdom from this conversation. Let's say uh, this might be someone who's never even thought about any of this stuff before. What do they, what do they do? So in terms of like never even thought about marketing before or going into brand, business for them, brand let's new say out of PT school. Brand new out of PT school or, or brand new, like they want to kind of dive in and start doing their own thing, but they want to do it in a way that's efficient and that doesn't break the bank. Right. So I would definitely say start, start with the end in mind. So um, that's a, from a great book, right? So, um, so start with the end in mind, meaning, but don't start at the end. I think a lot of people confuse that with, they start with the end in mind, but then they go right to the end, they go to marketing. Right. So I like to equate everything back to physical therapy. Right. So when we learn about developmental patterns, we, we all know, like we start with rolling and then quadruped high kneeling. Right. So if you take a patient that's injured and has a neural, you know, and motor control problem and start them in standing up with multiple planes, you've missed a bunch of it. Right. So if you start marketing without understanding who your ideal customer is and finding out what they think and how they feel, you're going to spend a lot of money. And you're not going to know why it's not working. You're just going to think Facebook ads doesn't work or I'm not good enough, which is a very common thing, right? So take the time to do the work, the groundwork. Nobody loves to learn rolling patterns, but why is it important? Because if you work from the ground up, you take the time to instill these good patterns underneath. So take the time to do that. And the other thing I would say is um, just decide you know, don't go through analysis paralysis. Decide and move. And the only way you're going to know is you got to put it out there. So, you know, Facebook lives, Instagram lives, that's, you know, we didn't maybe start when social media was big, but which, so by the way, I have to make a point that I think that's why it's harder for us. So our generation did not, we didn't have, so I didn't even have a computer when I went to college. Nope. Like, so <laughs> we didn't start with, I didn't have a cell phone. Like, 
So it's very different for us because this next generation coming up, they're comfortable on social media. We may not be, but the truth is it's like everything else. Just do it. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. So, and you know, if no one's, well, I'm afraid no one's going to watch it, but who's watching it now if you're not putting it out? Nobody. So you're no worse off, right? Right. So just do create um, an action step. Like, you know, um, there's a book and now I forget who the author is. It's called The One Thing, right? And you just focus on one thing. Focus on one thing that you can do today to improve on understanding your ideal customer. If you're already past that, what can you do today to understand more about your messaging? Easy. What's the one thing you can yeah, do? Yeah, just, just choose one. doesn't have to be a million things. You don't have, doesn't have to be perfect. No, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just one thing. Just one thing. Awesome. And now last question is the one that I ask everyone. And that is knowing where, knowing where you are now in your life and in your business and your practice, what advice would you give to yourself as a brand new physical therapist straight out of PT school? Woof. Um, I would probably say be open to the possibility. Yeah. Great so, advice. Yeah, just be open to possibility of what's 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 possible. Yeah, excellent advice. And now, Krista, where can people find you if they have questions, they want to know more about you and your practice and everything that you're doing? What what's the deal? So my business is Pilates in the Grove. So they can always um, find Pilates in the Grove. All has everything about our business, but they can for, find more about me at kristagurka.com. So C-H-R-I-S-T-A-G-U-R-K-A.com. I have some freebies up there. So that site, Krista Gurka, is more really about kind of business strategy. Mm-hmm. Great. Strategy like launch, um, you know, mindset, that kind of stuff. And then the Pilates in the Grove website, really, if you want to look at what we do brick and mortar wise, that's mm-hmm. kind of how we do it. But like I said, the website's kind of a mess, right? <laughs> right we now. understand. So, it's exceptional yeah. <laughs> times. And, and I know that you have some free resources and some freebies for our listeners. So where can they find that? Yep. So there is a um, link, which we can either link up in your show notes, mm-hmm. right? Or we can, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, so we can absolutely. there's a marketing quiz that I created that basically will put people at, it'll kind of just give you an idea of where you are. Are you like a novice or are you a pro? Have you got this stuff down? And I could probably be calling you for advice. Awesome. And then based on where you are, it kind of tells you kind of what you should focus on. Um, as well as then we have that leads you into, um, I have a, a social media and a Facebook live checklist. It kind of just gives you kind of a little bit of, I find um, structure helps me. So learning how to batch content, learning to say that, like, okay, every Monday I'm going to do a motivational Monday post. Every mm-hmm. Tuesday I'm going to do a Tuesday tutorial post. I think it just helps me map things out. And so I think it helps business owners also feel less overwhelmed when they can have a calendar. Um, and we have national days. I, it has like a bunch of national days that pertain to our um, industry already built out for you, which is easy. Awesome. That sounds great. And I'm sure the listeners will really appreciate that. So thank you so much. This was great. And again, the thing that I love about all these strategies is it takes very little money to accomplish them. Yes, just, exactly. just some time, which right now I think a lot of people have a lot of time. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and coming on. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Karen. And I hope your listeners enjoyed it. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to be on. Anytime. And everyone, thanks so much for listening. Have a great couple of days and stay healthy, wealthy, and smart. And a big thank you to Krista for sharing all of that great info on marketing for your physical therapy practice. And of course, a big thank you to NetHealth for sponsoring uh, this episode. So again, NetHealth. NetHealth wants to help you maintain strong relationships with your patients. That's why they created the Redoc Patient Portal, which provides a secure line of communication between you and your patients. Conduct virtual visits and have follow-up conversations with your patients via secure messaging when it's convenient for you. Patients have 24-7 secure on-demand access to their therapy health information without phone calls and voice messages. To find out more, contact them at redoc at nethealth.com. 
Thank you for listening and please subscribe to the podcast at podcast.healthywealthysmart.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media.